good artists copy, great artists steal. Way too many artists when they create stuff, they create blockades for their own creative abundance. They create these mental constructions that form obstacles to be truly freely creative in every possible sense of the word. And being aware of those obstacles is the first step to actually overcoming them and, and, and exponentially letting your own creativity grow to massive amounts. Now here's what happened. And this, this made me realize a particular aspect of these, 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 these subtle blockades. I was talking with a friend and the friend asked me where do you get inspiration for videos and stuff like that. Where do you get that from? And I said, well, from, from everything basically. And I gave an example, sometimes I read a book in the morning, in my morning ritual, the reading part of my morning ritual. And then one sentence triggers my brain and fires it up. And for the ne next minute, there's this, this, this fancy moment of me giving, for example, a video like this, presenting that, that idea that comes in my head. And, and then I say, well, several hours later, after my morning ritual, I will record that moment on camera, just right there as it is. And she said, well, do you then also refer to that book? Like, do you credit that book, that one sentence where, where that, that triggered your brain, do, do, you, do you credit that book? And I said, no, I don't credit that book. And, and, and here's the reason why. The sentence had nothing to do with the actual presentation of the thing. The presentation was already in my head. It just re got released by that one sentence. And I could already see on her on her face that she was a little bit annoyed by that. Like, oh, you don't credit that book. Like, you should credit that book. She was thinking that, and 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 I explained it a little bit further to to convince her before she would react. And I said something like, um, "Well, if you would read the sentence in the book and then see the video, there would be literally no similarity. So it makes no sense to credit the book." And she said, well, well, you should, because that's where it somehow came from. In that conversation, we had a discussion about that. A short discussion that led to nothing, like most discussions lead to nothing really. So yeah, we had a discussion about that and I realized like, hey, this is, the, this is one of these blocks. This is one of these creative blocks that I had myself at some point. At some point, I was indeed afraid to to present that idea in a, in a painting or in a, in a, in a video or in a, in a poet, poem, in a, in a, in a short story, you know, whatever I was doing. I was afraid to present that because, because it came from somewhere and it was inspired by something that was not necessarily me. And so, so, and so overcoming these subtle obstacles are really important because it makes no f sense to even remotely think about quoting that book when it has nothing nothing to do with what you're presenting or what you're creating at that moment and and so we need an, a new narrative on copyright infringements or whatever we need a new narrative on on things like that and um, and so let's 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 talk about that let's talk about that Here's what I believe about communication. Let's say you read a sentence in a book. Let's say you copy paste that sentence literally. So we are going a little bit further, a little bit more extreme. Let's say you copy paste it literally, the words literally. Did you then copy paste that message? Now we live in a society where we believe that we then copy paste the message exactly as it is. We believe that. Because the words are the same and so we think the message is the same. Now in science we've already discovered that, that there's so much more to communication than just words. We know that. We know that we communicate with body language way more with presence, with visuals, way more than with words. When you're giving a speech, 
the way you present the words are more important for the impact of the words than the words themselves. We know that. And we know that when we are communicating, we are communicating with non-verbal communication way more than with actual verbal communication. And what is that non-verbal communication? That non-verbal communication is you, your personality that is shaped by your experiences. It is an expression of who you are, not of who that entity that wrote that sentence that you're copy-pasting. Let's imagine that you're doing that. It's not a representation of that entity. It's not a representation of that personality, of that lifestyle, of that. It's not an expression of that at all. And so, so when you think about it in a philosophical way, you might even, you might even be able to say that copy-pasting something literal, when the thing that you're copy-pasting is just words, is impossible to start off with. You cannot copy-paste that. When you're saying it in your words, you're saying it as an expression of who you are. And you're putting it in a context as an expression of who you are. There's, there's, I might even argue that there's not real copy-pasting going on there. Now, my 20-year-old 20 20 year self would now have slapped me in the face, literally. Like, dude, like, you, you literally copy-paste the words, like, that's, that's copyright, that's, 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 that you have, like, that's, that's the same thing as, as the other person, that's not you, it's not you at all. My mindset now, and that's the mindset that, that, that creates way more creations, way more paintings, way more stories, way more writings, way more whatever I'm creating. It's just exponentially grown. I can assure you that because of society, I still credit everything. Whenever something is remotely literal or somewhat literal, I will credit it at all times. Like there's, there's not a thing in my mind that I would not do that, but from a rational point of view, I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense because it's 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 impossible it's impossible you cannot copy paste it if you're true to what you are to your personality to your being there's no way you can copy paste it because a message will inevitably be completely different and it's important for artists to understand that that is okay it's okay to do that. It's okay to let yourself be inspired. And it's very easy, by the way, to, to take those moments of inspiration, not use the sentence and only use the result of it in a way that there's literally no copy pasting going on and then presenting that as a creation. There's that where, where everything that happened, happened in your own brain, that is completely fine. And I see so many artists that don't do that so many artists that that are afraid of doing that because of some thing they have in their head like yeah but it's not this is not me this is not necessarily black like blah 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 and then they overthink it and then they don't create or don't present that as their own because because it feels like they are lying and and this video is made to show you that you're not lying at all you're not lying at all there's no lie in that if if if, if there's if you go as extreme as, as the literal copy-pasting, it's not even copy-pasting. Let alone when you don't do that and there's nothing literally transcribed, then there's just no need and reason to feel that feeling. So let's talk a little bit further about, about that. Let's, let's really go in deep to this sense of self, because that's what it eventually is. The sense of self. We. In the West, predominantly in China, that's, that's much less. But we in the West, we have this ego thing going on. We want to protect our own self, our own identity. And we do that with these stupid conventions that actually block creativity at most. And, and it's, it's, it's literally the insecurity of the ego that's in play here. Let me explain that for a moment so you can understand it. Or you can understand what I mean, you know? Not like... You don't stand um, so let me explain that for a moment. Our society has this thing around ourselves where we think and where we perceive our identity as something that we created. By the way, that's also that's also not completely true. 
the nature nurture model already shows that nature is only a small portion and there are a lot of studies that, that, that indicate that nurture is a real part and the nature part also doesn't really come from you, you didn't do anything there you know? and so a lot of it is a reaction to your surroundings a lot of your actions and your ideas are a reaction to your surroundings so for some part that is, that is other people or other things that are not you, that's not your identity. Let's say that from that side of your personality, 10, 20, 30% is just, like I'm, I'm just guessing here, it just comes from other parts. And then we have these emotions and desires that we think are our own, are our own. Like desire to eat particular stuff, or a desire to love, or a desire to, to feel happy and then and feeling happy like the serotonin production in the brain which we think is, is is produced in the brain and then gives you that that happy feeling the happy neurotransmitter serotonin recent studies in the last two decades show that a large portion portion of the serotonin is actually produced in the gut which means that bacteria and viruses who have different DNAs than, than our own, that are different organisms that are living inside of us, are producing serotonin that goes through the body and creates that pleasure feeling. And so it's not our brain there that creates it, it's partially those microbes and viruses and all of that stuff. Now, Naveen Jain, uh, the founder of Viome, even goes as far to say that 90% of serotonin will be produced in the gut. Now I'm not sure if that's true and I don't really believe it because it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel that true. But he has some real research. It's one of the richest guys on this planet and, and, and he has put a lot of time in those those things and put a lot of money in that research. So there might be something true about that. And when we think about those things, so our desires and our feelings are partially produced by organisms, at least partially, there is certainty and factuality about that, at least partially about uh, produced by organisms that are not even us. Thinking about that I, thinking about who we are and how that Western idea of, of, of us as something created by us only is complete fucking BS, it's complete bull. It's just not true. It's an old mindset. It's an old perspective on, on what we human beings are. We human beings are much more than ourselves, than our own identities. And science is slowly catching up on, on describing and mapping out how that actually works. And so when we realize, fully realize that our identity is not really, not really that much created by us in the first place then we can understand and truly live in a way that we can redefine that whole copyright thing first of all the need to have those those those, those ideas those conventions around um own ability of ideas own ability of of things to to create rules like copywriting and, and uh, copywriting infringements and, and plagiat and, and all of that stuff is kind of being brought in a new perspective in a new light that ownership is, is like it's not necessarily completely us it might be our friends as much as our virus as much as particular things in our brain that are partially creating that it's not even us and then 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 that own ability of that becomes a little bit less strong a little bit less real and and the need to 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 put those ownership intellectual ownerships on a pedestal in some kind of strange way reduces and I'm not advocating for not giving ownership where it's due. I'm not advocating for not giving credits where it's due. That's important. You have to give credits. That's why we artists do stuff. We want like it's 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 a really important vibe. What I'm saying is that using those conventions as your core source and really trying to come up with stuff that is completely your own and only of you. And it's not inspired by anything and the moment it's inspired a little bit blocking it down 
or giving credits or like that's really gonna drain your creative energy you have to let your creative energy go you have to let your creative abundance be present and be feelable it's an essential thing for every artist to to feel that creative abundance and to let that abundance be just grow and just go through the roof that's just that's so important and finding that balance is a is a balance that you will have to search for for the rest of your life but i can say that when a person starts to be annoyed because you were inspired by a particular sentence and created a video for example out of it like this video by the way this came in my head when I was reading a meditation book on awareness and I was reading a particular sentence and it reminded me of a conversation with my friend earlier and then this whole video came in my head in like several minutes ago. Like that has nothing to do with that book anymore. Then having a feeling that you have to credit that book somehow is obnoxious it's ridiculous and it will definitely drain down your energy and so becoming more aware of the reality of what is identity and what is intellectual ownership connected to that, that that identity then and how much of that is really real and how much of communication is 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 non-verbal realizing those things will enable you hopefully to understand that Words are not engraved in history, they're just not. And, and getting something from a book or inspired by it, like that's just okay. It's all good. Let your creative abundance 